Last week, we got some help from Mr. Mike and Miss Jade with demo subfloor and rough framing. And now today, I'm going to get some help from Lindsay for rough in of plumbing, electrical, and I'm going to be installing a window that is just way too gorgeous to not. There's two more episodes of handling the stuff behind the walls before we can start to get to putting the walls on and designing, but I really couldn't be more stoked to thoroughly involve the humans that I love the most through this process. So, wood frames here, but you guys aren't surprised by that. She and I are going to do the rough in electrical and plumbing because I'm actually really nervous. Not nervous isn't the word, but it's just new. It's like I have never really dived into PVC before and it's actually fairly simple and I've never really dove into correcting old electrical and Lynn's is an incredible sounding board for all of that because she's done a ton of it at her house. And so she was thinking the best way to go about all this would be, we'll do two switches. So you have will be the vanity right here with light. One for all your main lights and then one for the fan. Oh, how do we, we need that's it, let's see. If it works and this whole thing breaks, I'll be so sad. Oh, shut up. It works. So, two switches and then I'm doing a crazy, beautiful old wood shelving unit that will have uh, accent LED lighting. Okay, we're gonna go do plumbing now. Okay, <laughs> wait, you're going all, why are you going in on your belly? Oh my God. I don't know. Sand is the worst right now. We have one more episode until we dive into like the actual thing of the bathroom and decorating and designing. And the one more episode is actually with Jess who you see me texting here. She and her dad are both helping me with the plumbing for this trailer. And just in general, they are my source of knowledge because I have no idea what I'm doing. So I'm texting about what I could potentially do right now. And it just seems like it's not much. That's why I said rough in of plumbing. I am literally just putting where the plumbing is going to go. So everybody gets a general idea. What? I thought I was gonna do all this funny shit down here. There's no room. Woo! You guys didn't see last episode where I put in the framing, but I didn't absolutely secure it to the top and the bottom. That is what I'm doing here as Lindsay starts to pre-drill the holes for the rough end of the plumbing for the toilet, the shower, and my sink. Of course, I gotta bleed a little bit, right? I do want to point out here that my studs are not 16 inches apart, but that is because I have different builds going into each section and I need them to be larger versus having those studs at every 16 inches. So just wanted you guys to be fully aware. So if you are framing out anything, you're going to be putting studs every 16 inches. Just to repeat that one more time. I'd like to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. I'm not sure if something is interfering with your happiness or your workflow. I know I've been sharing my mental over on my Patreon in depth and also here on in the last episode kind of giving you where I've been and something that really has been helping me to be honest and I love therapy is BetterHelp. BetterHelp assesses your needs and then matches you up with your own licensed professional therapist and you can start communicating with them within 48 hours. Now, this is not a crisis line. It's not a self-help line. It is professional therapy done securely online and it is available for clients worldwide. And on top of all of that that I just went into detail on, you can literally log in anywhere, anytime. If you guys are interested in trying out BetterHelp's service, use the link down below, click it in the description box. I've linked it down below and also pinned the comment for you. Thank you so much to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's episode and just thank you for your service. Again, guys, click the link down in the description box if you want to test it out. Let's jump back into this episode. Lindsay started preemptively putting supports throughout the framing and we are putting supports where we are thinking the plumbing is going to go, but it does crack me up a little bit with my impatience because I was just trying to move forward getting this framing done and Lindsay was like, hold on, these walls are not even, let's make sure they're level and let's take a breather while we do this instead of rushing and having everything wonky when we go to put sheetrock up. Plumbing throughout the trailer used to be all PVC. You do not want hot water running through PVC, so I am replacing everything with PEX, which I have never worked with but after looking it up it seems fairly easy and asking a couple of people they have different recommendations as to crimp it not to use the push and plugs when doing connections and all that sounded a little bit overwhelming so my main focus was to put the cold water where it was supposed to go and the hot water where it was supposed to go because I am such a noob to plumbing anything any sort of way I decided to leave the plumbing where it was because the cast iron situation definitely freaked me out we started with plumbing because the plumbing was the easiest and now now we're moving into electrical boxes and extending the electrical into different areas into the bathroom that it wasn't originally. I have three stripped down. I have one little outlet. Bada bing, bada boom, boom, bada bing, da. So you have two switches, one outlet, one light. 
We are doing great, Miss Rachel. I started cutting and stripping all of the wire for Lindsay and just hanging it over the frame. I even hung the outlet boxes where I wanted them to go and the ones where you see the metal are actually adjustable once you put the drywall on, which is really nice. And even though electrical is basic, I have always had an issue making the connections the right way. So that is where I wired in and I leave that portion to Miss Woodbrain. Folks, if you can see this on the camera, this is exactly why you need a zircon stud finder. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm wiring everything through, but even just thinly. Just a regular stud finder wouldn't catch that. I don't mind it's sponsored by them, but like this is how people get electrocuted. They just go, oh, it's a stud, and drill through. You pierce that wire that's hot, and then you blow your breaker and you also blow your face off because you electrocute yourself. Now, where are we pulling juice exactly? Well, this trailer actually has electrical fully set up, which is really incredible. I just turned the breakers off as we continue to drill holes and pull the wire through to the top light fixture where the original electrical was being pulled from for all of the switches and the outlets for this bathroom. Love my friends and I love that we get down and dirty. So Lindsay jumped up and started to pull the wires through where I was talking about before where that light fixture was. We added a new box, pulled the old wire and the new wire through and we will deal with tying it all together essentially in a little bit. Get you a best friend like Woodbrain. Um, my thumb literally is the worst right now due to an injury. So Lindsay's is going to she show you. Give him any thumbs up. No, but she's also going to show you how to split the situation. To bring power to both of these switch boxes, what we're doing is taking a smaller piece of that white cord, stripping down the ends, and then connecting the hot wire to the hot, the white to the white, which is the neutral, and then copper to copper, and then pulling that extra strand, if you will, down into the second box, which will have power because you're splitting the power from the top cord and the top box into the bottom one. Then when Lens was gone, I added the GFCI outlet, and fun fact, when I tested all of the electrical Everything worked but my outlet box that I did by myself. So there you go. <laughs> it's just like a mini town. So now I'm gonna take you. This is like my where you pull into my house, and that is my trash can. Dump who? How's it going over there, best friend? <laughs> I found this window on Facebook Marketplace for 90 bucks and when I looked it up, it typically goes for 300 because it's a two foot by five foot window that I will be installing into the bathroom. I was just a little nervous about it so I wanted to do something else I've never done and frame for a door, but an arch door that I will be welding later. For the most part, I followed the traditional door framing and I did a whole free Patreon post about the window framing and the door framing photos that I referenced to throughout this, but I am going to be switching it up a little bit because we need to support for an arch. I cut smaller supports towards the top and then I did an angled version as well and I swear this house is magic because I'm not kidding when I say I found these in the trailer and they're the perfect angle so I'm gonna use this metal to make the angle perfect on each side and fully support and then I'll cut the excess metal off. As I mentioned before, I cut off these little supports to the same size, one to be smaller in the middle just to support that arch. I did some kerf cutting to test a piece of plywood to see if this idea was even going to work. Kerf cutting is when you cut a bunch of tiny cuts very close to each other, but not all the way deep in the wood. That way it allows it to bend. I don't know why I just made this so much more difficult. I could have just done this with drywall and soaked it, but that's the idea, okay? So now you can see, look at me, I'm giving you a really hard example. I'm gonna cut these off and then show you. I need to get my angle grinder and use anyways because Miss Jade needs to borrow it. I would just like to highlight Miss Jade real quick because she just went from demoing to legitimately cutting an open opening for a door. So if you guys want to talk about just diving in and figuring out, here is a real-time example from my last episode to now. This actually works. I just think the wood looks a little wonky. Okay, angle grind those suckers off. Once I cut those excess pieces off, I decided to just step away from this right now. That way it didn't make it worse because it looked pretty good to me. It's like for the door, for the window, there is a specific way to frame. So that's what you see me doing here, demoing out the old frame where needed, and then I'm going to be building in a new proper frame to hold the weight of the new window since this isn't a trailer window i'm not keeping this a trailer and i'm just going to remind you guys one more time that yes this is the guest house world's most difficult thing to demo is this trailer okay Freeze. and someone else pointed out to me last time that i should be getting permits if this is going to be a permanent 
situation and I will. So I will keep you updated on that process as well when I hit it. The reason that I was the most intimidated by this was cutting into the physical metal of the trailer because if I messed it up, what in the world are we going to be doing folks? So once I got past that fear and I started to see how this is really coming together a lot more easily than I anticipated, I relaxed on into it and oodled away. You don't wanna to forget to go in and use that gap filler foam to fill wherever there is a gap obviously and then you want to use that window sealant wherever you need all the way around it to completely weatherproof it inside and out. After the framing was done, I went in and cleaned the metal and the wood as best as I could before using that foam insulation around all of the framing. And then as an extra precaution, I even painted it that flex seal paint in their white. I will be looking into a venting solution. This window is just way too good to pass up. I know it should open, but I can DIY something else that can make this bathroom fully functional, just like one with the window that opens. The lighting that you see right here is the sunset and then the sun rises to the right. And those mountains are the ones I always post over on my Instagram story. I love the view out of this window. And yes, there are some unsightly objects like the one I'm running over and pointing at like the neighbors that are never home, but we can build privacy fences for that. So drop a comment down below if you have any ideas. I totally feel like I'm using this series to drag my friends to the desert, but who wouldn't want that anyways? And I'm excited to just introduce you to people that you don't know exist in my life and see how I am learning something new along with you. Thank you guys so much for the love on this this series so far. We're going to ramp up with a design element next episode. And I do want to shout out five of my patrons, which are Amelia P, Meredith M, Ashley M, Alexi S, and Rachel G. Thank you guys so much once again. And shout out to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's episode. I will see you very soon for our next DIY.